guys. Welcome to Movement Church this Sunday morning. If it's not cold and rainy and wet where you're at this morning like it is here, you might be thinking, did Don record this on Wednesday? Listen, don't be a conspiracy theorist today. It is, after all, the Lord's Day. And speaking of God, I hope you're able to have a real encounter with Him today. Times like these are the exact reason why we turn to God and talk about something transcendent. Sometimes we need to rise above the day-to-day reaction to current events to get a 30,000-foot view of who God is and what He's all about. Am I the main character of this story, or is God? When you have that answer right, your life aligns, and you have something extra. Having an eternal perspective, knowing who is in control, is the perfect thing for times like these. It gives us the endurance we need and allows us to tap into a power that's beyond us. If this is your first time tuning into Movement, thanks for checking us out. You're our VIP and we'd love to connect with you. Check out movementvip.com and get in touch. If you like what we're serving, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel for updates and new content. Before we move on, you may have seen some of the quarantine stories we've shared on social media. And we specifically want to hear from you. What's your story? What has been challenging to you during this time? Where have you seen God show up and what is he teaching you? Sending, send us a note at movementcolumbus.com. Let's jump over to an interview between our director of outreach, Trig Beaker, and Gene Griffith, operation manager at Sun Ministries. Even in these times, we want to be a light to our community and partner with other ministries who are doing this well. Let's watch. Well, good morning, Movement Church. Uh, we are so excited to have Gene Griffith, who is the operations manager at Sun Ministries with us this morning. Gene, great to see you. How are you doing? Doing well, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to join you. Yeah, so uh, for, for those of you that don't know at Movement, Sun Ministries is one of the main ministries that we partner with here in Hilliard. Uh, it stands for Serving Our Neighbor. And uh, they're shifting their focus a little bit during this time of pandemic. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, yeah, during this pandemic, we have still been working hard, serving our neighbors. We had to pause our three-generation family ESL program in March, um, but we have continued offering online English classes for adults and activities for children of all ages using Zoom and, and Flipgrid. Um, also, after the pandemic started, we launched a calling campaign and called 685 families who have participated in our programs over the past couple years to check in, see how they're doing and what needs they have during this time. And we've been connecting a lot of those families to resources in the community to help with things like food access and help with bill payments so you know their families can stay stable and keep a roof over their head during this time. Um, also, we are working to redesign our summer lunch camp. We're committed to feeding children as we have for the past 13 summers. And um, we are going to be offering grab and go lunches through the summer for children and also launching a virtual camp to attend to children's social and emotional and mental health needs where we'll be coming to them daily with interactive online activities led by their favorite camp staffers and volunteers. Wow, that is really awesome to hear uh, that things are going so well. Now, can you tell me a little bit about how Movement and other churches have been able to step up and help you guys and support you uh, on this journey of helping those families currently with uh, those physical needs? Yes, yes. Um, in Movement, you've been a great partner of ours serving this community for a long time. And more recently, um, you've really stepped up to help us um, you know, with specific families that we're working with who have very tangible needs during this time. Um, you've been able to help several of our families with rent payments and utility payments, um, just to take that, that burden off of them during this time. And, um, your prayers and support have meant so much. There are several churches and organizations in the community that we're partnering with in this way um, that are able to help you know, through their benevolence funds, um, helping families with some of these needs during the pandemic. 
That's awesome. So would you suggest if people want to give continuing uh, towards those needs that, that uh, giving directly to the benevolence funds or giving directly to the church uh, that can provide those needs to you guys would be the best way to do that? Or are there other ways they can support you financially? Um, yeah, e either, either way is fine. I mean, giving directly to the church benevolent funds is very helpful or um, donations directly to Sun Ministries can also help us as we prepare for summer lunch camp and you know the costs associated with feeding children and the activities for children. Um, so you know both of those things are, are very helpful during this time. Now speaking of that summer lunch program, obviously it's going to look a little bit different this summer, but for those watching right now who are thinking, you know, what can I do? Uh, how can I get involved uh, with that uh, mission this summer? Uh, what would you say to them? Okay, well, we are excited. There will be lots of ways for people to get involved this summer. One thing that you can be doing right now is to pray, um, pray for the staff and volunteers, um, pray for the children who will be attending the program. And then we will have a lot more information soon about ways that people can volunteer and partner with us through this program, both on the food distribution side and also on the online activities. We've talked about having you know, enrichment packets or activity bags that we can send home with the children to supplement the activities that we're doing online. So um, check our, our website, which is sun-ministries.org and also our social media because we will have lots of updates very soon um, about ways to get involved and would, would love to, to see you this summer. That is so awesome. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for encouraging us. And we are so excited that we get to continue to partner with you guys at Sun Ministries. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much for, for all your support and your partnership.
Well, hey, it is week two in our series, One Day at a Time, A Guide to Survival. And in this series, we have been taking some snapshots from the book of Exodus, from the nation of Israel's time in the desert. And we're talking through these things because we think there are some amazing parallels to what they went through and what we're going through right now. I think that if you had asked your average Israelite in that time, they would have said, it feels like this is a dream. It feels like I'm waking up in the twilight zone. And I'm assuming if we ask some of our uh, moms who have been working through e-learning or some of us who have been working from home, some of us who have been uh, quarantined or, or maybe even furloughed from a job, we would say the same thing. This feels like a weird dream. And so we're looking at Israel. We're looking at what God was asking them to do and the ways that he was asking them to be stretched and to grow and seeing that there are a lot of similarities. The book of Exodus is, uh, is the book that tells us the story of Israel and of their exodus. The word exodus means exit, and this is Israel exiting from Egypt. And so to talk about that, we have to understand how they got there. When sin entered the world and everything was compromised, God approached a man named Abraham in the Old Testament, and he said, I'm going to restore my relationship with man. I'm going to fix everything, and I'm going to establish a covenant with you and make a great nation out of you that will show my love for all people. And Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. And Jacob had a son named Joseph. And through some crazy circumstances, this man named Joseph ended up in Egypt. And he was second in command over the entire nation during a time of famine. And so his family came to live in this, this uh, region of, of Egypt. And his, his people grew. God blessed them. They grew to be uh, millions of, of people, and they became known as the Israelites. And over time, the, the new Pharaoh, the new leader, wasn't thrilled about the presence of the Israelites, and so he made them into slaves. He enslaved those people, and actually he set in motion a genocide where he tried to kill uh, every male boy that was born, but one survived. And that, that boy's name, he, he became to be known a, a man named Moses, and I'm sure you know that story, that Moses was the one who led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. God used a, a number of plagues and different things to get the attention of Pharaoh in Egypt. And, and when God said, let my people go, Pharaoh said, fine, get out of here, take your people. And yet they relented, they chased the Israelites, and God was able to part the Red Sea and show his power so that Israel could walk across the Red Sea to freedom. Now, everything wasn't smooth sailing after that, so maybe you've heard this phrase that even though God was able to take the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, he was never able to get the slavery out of the Israelites. They were still slaves to their sin, and they still had clouded thinking in some of their patterns. And this sounds similar to us. Sometimes, even though God is offering us hope and freedom, we continue to choose to be lost in sin and to struggle. Well, the Israelites were grumbling and complaining. They weren't happy about their circumstances or what God was doing in their lives. They, they took this uh, route to go through the, the wilderness and the desert, and they weren't happy about it. Last week, Trigg showed us that, that God provided manna, this mystery food, uh, just to, to put their attention on him. He wanted to show them that he had a plan and he was a provider. And yet we saw them being ungrateful. We, we saw them lacking faith. And yet we saw God reminding them, as he does all throughout the story in this narrative, that he is faithful. This week we want to jump into a story in Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20 that kind of shows us a continuation of this theme. Numbers 20 verse 1 says this. In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zin and camped at Kadesh. While they were there, Miriam died and was buried. There was no water for the people to drink at the place, so they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, If only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers. Why have you brought the congregation of the Lord's people into this wilderness to die, along with all our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? This land has no grain, no figs, no grapes, no pomegranates, and no water to drink. Well, I want us to look at a simple phrase that we want to build over this morning. And this first part is this, even when we complain, 
Why do I take us there? Because even when we complain, even when Israel complains, God still has a plan and is showing his faithfulness. God had told Abraham he was going to make him into a great nation, and he delivered on that promise. God had told Israel that he was going to bring them out of slavery, and he had delivered on that promise. God had been with them, and God had provided water once as they were walking through the wilderness. There was a time that they, they found a bitter spring, and, and God asked Moses to throw a, a piece of wood into that, and it changed the water into something they could drink drink, something that wasn't bitter. God had provided manna, as we already mentioned. And there was even a time that they didn't have water in the desert. And God said, Moses, strike this rock and water will flow from it and we'll take care of the people. And so it's kind of crazy that Israel would complain because they had seen God deliver and God be faithful time and time and time again. And yet here they are complaining in this story. Well, let's jump back into verse six. It says this, Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle, where they fell face down on the ground. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord said to Moses, you and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, speak to the rock over there and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff and water gushed out. So the entire community and their livestock drank their fill. Let's remember that phrase we're building. Even when we complain, and let's add this, and don't listen. Even when we complain and don't listen. Now, why do I say that? Because God gave some instructions to Moses in this instance, and Moses didn't listen. God said to speak to this rock and water would come out. And what did Moses do? Well, Moses hit the rock. Maybe he hit the rock out of anger. Maybe he hit this rock because it was what he had done before and what he had success with. But the, the key point is this, Moses didn't listen. I think it's important for us to pause and know this, that simple faith is obedience to what God is currently asking you to do. Simple faith is obedience to what God is currently asking you to do. I don't know what God is asking you to do. I don't know the circumstances and the struggle that you're in, but I know this, God is always asking us to trust him, to rely on him, and to put our faith in him. And oftentimes, just like the Israelites, we fail to do that. We need to listen to what God is asking us to do. It might not be exactly like what you've done in the past. You might want to trust what you've done like Moses, but we need to listen to what God is asking us to do. You've relied on yourself and God is asking you to rely on him. You've had success, but God is asking you to rely on him. Maybe you're scared to trust God and yet God is saying, I want you to rely on me and not yourself, not your own courage. I've told you before this story at Movement Church, but when God was calling us to be church planners or people that would start a church, one of the, the things, the inner conversations that I was having was I, I didn't know if I, if I wanted to do that or if it was time. God, God was pretty clear and, and spoke to me when I was in high school, put it on my heart to be someone that started churches, that started churches, that started churches. And yet I was on staff at another church before Movement Church and I was well taken care of. I was provided for, I was comfortable. Things were successful and, and things were going great. And, and sometimes I would talk about the dreams and things that I felt God was pulling me toward and people would say, you need to just relax. You need to be comfortable. You need to, you need to just engage and, 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 and make a home here. And over time, I came to realize that I was running from what God was calling me to do. I wasn't being obedient to what God was calling me to do. And yeah, I'd had some success or some patterns in the past, but trusting them would be disobedience. There's a verse in the book of James that says, if you know what God wants you to do and you don't do it, you're sinning. And I was living in sin as a student pastor, being on staff at another church, not following God's call and God's command and what he was asking me to do with my life. And so even when we complain, even when we don't trust, even when we don't listen, here's the last part of our phrase, God is still holy and faithful. I don't know what God is calling you to do right now, but God still wants to be a part of your story and wants you to know that he is holy and faithful to you through the person of Jesus. 
There's another time in my life that I was being called to step out on faith, and it was when God called us to adoption. We had already had Malachi and Canaan, our biological children, and God was calling us to adoption. And I'll be honest, it was scary. Adoption is expensive. Adoption is unpredictable. And yet God was so clear through the years. This is how I want you to add to your family. And I was excited to do that, but I was scared to do that. And yet, even when we're scared, even when we complain, even when we don't listen, even when we drag our feet, God is still holy and faithful. And so let me ask you this this morning. Are you complaining? Are you grumbling? Are you not happy with what God's doing? Are you dragging your feet? Are you not listening? Are you not being obedient? Are you not being pushed to action? Are you not happy about where God has you or where he has our country right now, where he has your family, where he has your life? Even when we complain and don't listen, God is still holy and faithful. As God brought Israel out of Egypt, he was walking them toward the promised land. And they fought against it. They, they, they sunk their feet in and they wandered in this desert because they didn't want to trust God or listen to him. And next week, we're actually going to look at the story when God brought them right up to the edge of the promised land. And they could see into it. And he, they sent some spies out and these, these spies just didn't trust him. I can't wait to dig into that story more, but I can't help but think sometimes we're looking ahead at what God is taking us toward. We're looking at where God wants us to be and what he wants us to see, and we're saying, no, God, I'm not ready. I don't trust you. I don't want that. It's interesting that in this story, God was giving the Israelites water because often I think we, we can drink water and, and we can... We can get thirsty again. And yet there's a story in the New Testament where God shows his ultimate holiness and faithfulness to us as his people. And he, he, he has Jesus tell this story about living water that will never run out. Jesus is hanging out by a well. And this is what verse 7 says in John 4. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? It's true that men and women wouldn't have interacted much back then, and certainly not a Jew with a Samaritan, and yet Jesus is illustrating that his love has no boundaries, his love pursues us, and his love cannot be stopped. He's showing this woman love. He's extending peace and hope to her through the gospel. And Jesus says this, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. She asks, How can you offer better water than this well right here? And verse 13 says this, Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks of this water will soon become thirsty again. He's talking about normal everyday water like the Israelites had. Verse 14 says this, But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything. And Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. See, Israel was struggling to trust God, tr struggling to surrender to him, to surrender to his plan, to trust him and follow him. And you and I struggle in that same thing. It looked one way in the Old Testament and God was saying, follow me, I will provide for you. You'll be my people. In the New Testament, people were still struggling and still lost in their sin. And God said, I'm sending Jesus, even though your sin has separated you from God, even though your sin has driven a wedge between you and God, Jesus is going to come and give his life for you on the cross and his sacrifice and his surrender is going to bridge the gap and make it so that you can know God again. So that by putting your faith and your hope and your trust in Jesus and in his sacrifice and in what he did on the cross, you can know him and you can know God. You can have a relationship with God and you can be made whole and you can have this never ending living water that Jesus is talking about. A fresh bubbling spring that never ends because life with him restores you and gives you hope and lets you know love that you've been made to know, that you've always wanted to know. We can build our lives on the foundation of Jesus. The Israelites struggled to trust God and to follow God. But I want you to know this. Even when we complain and don't listen, God is still holy and faithful. Maybe you need reminded of that today. Maybe for the first time you're saying, God has pursued me. God has sent his one and only son, Jesus. And I need to trust him and rely on him to have a relationship with him. 
If you want to text this number that's at the bottom of the screen here, we would love to get in touch with you and talk to you about a relationship with Jesus, how you can start a relationship with Jesus today, how you can trust him and rely on him and find hope and love and relationship in him. Maybe today you're just realizing that in this season of life, because, because your job is unpredictable, because your job's been taken away, because your kids have been at home too long, because you don't know the state of your finances, because life is confusing or scary, or maybe you're tempted to complain, maybe you've been complaining. Maybe for all of those reasons, you're realizing that you're not trusting God. You're not looking to him. You're not relying on him. And he's saying, I want to provide for you. I need you to listen to me. I need you to be obedient. I need you to take steps toward me. Maybe today was just the reminder that you needed. That even when we don't trust, even when we complain, even when we grumble, even when we're mad, even when we don't want to listen, God is still pursuing us. And we can turn to him. We can, we can, we can pray to him. We can have a relationship with him. And we can know his faithfulness. We can know his holiness through the goodness of his son, Jesus. Let me pray for us as we close. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this reminder. God, thank you that even when we don't listen, even when we've walked away from you, even when we've sinned, you are still holy and faithful and good and you pursue us. God, we see that in the story of the Israelites being taken to the promised land. And we see that in the story of our lives in that you've offered us the person of Jesus. Lord, he paid the price for our sins and we can trust in him and we can have a relationship with him. We can be found in him and we can know him. God, I pray that we'll build our lives on this rock. Lord, we don't know what's next. We don't know what's happening this week or this month. God, we don't, we don't know when we're going to be able to meet in person again. And there's a lot of things up in the air. But we want to rely on your goodness, on your faithfulness. We want to look to you and trust in you even when we can't see what's ahead. Lord, just like the Israelites, you are providing for us and you are taking care of us. God, thank you for that reminder. Thank you that we can walk with you one day at a time and you're our guide. It's in the name of Jesus I pray, amen. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for joining me in my soon to be garden. I hope you have some propane left in the tank though this morning, and I'm not speaking metaphorically. It's Memorial Day weekend and those Hebrew nationals aren't going to grow themselves. Before we go, I want to give you a few reminders to sign off with. One, you can go to movementcolumbus.com slash give to practice a spiritual discipline and support the ministry we're doing here. Two, remember that we want to hear from you. Whether you're a first time visitor or you have a quarantine story to share, can you connect with us? And three, can you invite a friend next week? Our challenge to you is to take action and invite someone that may need to hear this series. Send them over to movementcolumbus.com to watch a service. Thanks, guys. Happy grilling. Happy Sunday.